These days we are always so busy grabbing coffee to go, scrolling our mobile phones, replying to emails, and we forget to make time for ourselves to do the thing that we love the most, which is creating art. On this channel, we make it super easy for you because we provide you with free trace down line drawings and reference photographs so that you can press on with the most important part, which is painting. In this week's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this pretty clover using Inktense pencils. If you don't have those, don't worry, you can use your regular watercolours. This is a really fast tutorial so that even if you're a beginner, you can join in. So I'm going to finish my coffee. Let's do this. I think I really needed that coffee. Okay, this is the paper that I'm using today. This is in a block. When you get a watercolour block, it has a black sheet like this that needs to be removed. And as you can see, I've traced down my picture like this just by pressing it onto the watercolour paper. We are using Derwent Inktense pencils today and these are the colours that I've swatched out. Mauve, Madder Brown, Dark Chocolate, bark, Ionian green, fern and amber. You can use the nearest that you have and you can also use watercolour if you don't have ink tents. This is my beloved Etcher palette here. It comes in a set of two and has plenty of wells and is of course non-staining. These are the brushes that I'm using. These are synthetic rounds. Well this is a selection of 10. I'm using a few rounds. Again these are from Etcher. Clean glass of water and we are good to go. Now the beauty of using ink tense pencils is of course you can use them in their very strongest form to get a really dark colour but in this instance we're using them to create these really subtle tones. You can see that I'm mixing the mauve from the paper that I've swatched the colours on and I'm just mixing the colours into the palette like this by adding some water very similar to the way that I would paint with watercolour paint. So I'm just adding some water to the mixture on the swatch card that I've done on the side here and just taking this wash all over the little flower head as you can see using my number three size round but I'm not taking the paint to the bottom part because I want to keep that a little bit lighter. We've been doing a lot more complex stuff on our channel lately, but this is going to be super easy for you. As you can see, I'm just dropping in the mauve As I've said earlier on, there are lots of different ways that you can use ink tents, but by swatching them out on the card like this, I believe it helps you gain control over the amount of pigment that you put onto the paper without worrying that it's going to be overworked. You can, of course, apply your paint directly onto the watercolour or the mixed media paper that you've chosen to use, but for now, this is how we're going to do it. We do have other Inktense tutorials as part of our tutorials here on our YouTube channel and I will put a playlist right at the end of this video so that you can click through and have a look at those if you want to. But for now, let's press on with a super easy one. You can see the colours that I've been swatching out as we work through and I'm just dropping in the darker colour green here, wet on wet, which means that I'm applying the Inktense pencil pigment directly onto the paper like this by just dropping it in using the tip of my brush. A really good way of applying the paint, making it super easy and stress-free. Now stress-free painting is what we're all about here on this channel. This is a very easy, straightforward botanical painting tutorial. But if you want to do something a little bit more special, we do have a, a Patreon site where we paint botanical painting. I just want to take a moment to tell you about our Patreon, which at the time of filming has four different membership levels, from mini weekly videos of doodles, vlogs, and podcasts to full-length botanical painting tutorials which are exclusive to Patreon and are of course ad-free. If this is something that interests you I've put a link in the description below plus it's a way for you to support my channel. So if botanical painting is your thing then do join us over on Patreon we'd love to see you there. We also have our own private Facebook group. 
Speaking of Facebook groups, if you'd like to have access to our line drawing for this tutorial, in fact, all of our tutorials on YouTube, we post them over on our Facebook group and um, you can also have the chance to post your finished paintings and have some feedback. We put all of the reference photographs and line drawings to all of our tutorials over there. But don't worry if Facebook isn't your thing. I'll also put the line drawing and reference photograph to this one right at the end of this video so that you can pause the video, screenshot it and print it out that way. So even if you're not on Facebook, don't worry, you can still join in. You can see me here adding a mix of the amber with a tiny bit of any of the brown colours. I used chocolate brown in its really lightest form here. We want the bottom part of the clover just to have this kind of beigey tone and I'm just trying to utilise the colours that I had. This colour that I've mixed up is Madder Brown. It's a kind of pinky brown tone and you can see me here using the tip of my number one size round brush just to apply that kind of red tone that's on the bottom of the plant. Cleaning my brush in the little puddle, patting it dry and then dropping in a, just a slightly darker mix of the same colour. Now you'll see that I'm kind of just mixing the colours as I go here on my little swatches that I have. You can still use it in the same way as watercolour but of course the benefits of doing so is that when ink tense dries it doesn't lift off in the way that watercolour does. So if you're struggling with watercolour application then this is definitely worth considering. These two colours here we have amber which is a kind of goldy yellowy tone along with a dark chocolate. And you can see this is kind of like a really golden deep brownie colour that I have on my palette. So what I'm doing now is just adding a little bit of detail with the veins on the papery sort of parts of the clover like this. Using the tip of my brush and making sure at this point that everything's completely dry. So just adding some fine detail, cleaning my brush and my little puddle, patting it dry first on the kitchen paper which is slightly out of shot here and then just using that damp brush to blend through the veins like this. We want them to have a soft edge here and there and just blending those colours together. If you are new to this channel, we launch brand new tutorials every Tuesday. So if this is something that interests you, please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell notification on the side there. That way you'll be notified every time we upload new content and you won't miss anything. And if you are finding value in this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up. It's a way of letting YouTube know that you like my content and it means that more people can see it. Okay, this is a watered down version of mauve and you can see I'm just picking it up from the paper swatches here along with a tiny bit of either of the dark colours, either dark chocolate or bark, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using it to darken up that colour. We don't want the colours to look flat. You can see how I'm applying it directly onto the paper, this is wet on dry and once I've applied the colour where I want the paint to go, I'm just cleaning my brush in the usual way with my tiny puddle of water in my palette and patting it and then blending it through. Now it's up to you how dark you want to apply these colours and of course you don't have to have the exact same colours that I'm using. If you have a purpley pink tone you can use that and mix it in with any sort of darker brown tone or a purpley tone to enhance your colours. The important thing here is making sure that your colours are varied and not flat. It's all about having fun with art, remember. Just enjoy the process and you'll see how much more relaxed you are and you'll find that probably by taking that pressure off yourself, you're creating paintings that will give you joy and make you very proud to show off. And remember, it's all a learning curve. So any mistakes, just mark them down to experience and just carry on with the next one. You can see from the swatches that the colours that I'm picking up here and of course there are many different ways as I said earlier on there are lots of different ways that you can use ink tents. Just blending this through we don't want any hard edges by applying the paint directly onto the paper and of course blending it in my usual way. Just keep building up your colours you can see here I'm just using the mauve again 
and just to give a little bit of definition to these tiny little petals that we have on the clover head. You can take your time with this, you don't have to rush with this type of painting. This is bark that I'm using here, swatching it out again with a tiny bit of the dark chocolate and just mixing them together to get a really dark tone and also just a tiny bit of the green there that was the Ionian green I think I used a tiny bit of that as well and just working in between these folds just to create a tiny bit of depth and shading and once again blending it out in the usual way Just putting in one or two of the, the central veins in a couple of these areas here and there, just so that we can kind of kick start our patterns on the bottom part. And just doing a little bit of outlining to create some definition where I feel it is needed, just carrying on that process. I'm taking the same color that's left on my brush and applying it to the top section here. We are back to Madder Brown this lovely reddy pinky brown with a tiny bit of bark. And I'm using this mix to now start to build up the central veins in each of the tiny little sections on the clover. I don't know whether you'd call them petals. If you know what they're called, drop them in the comments underneath this video. Also to let you know that we are on Instagram at The Wonders of Watercolour, um, we try to post up daily, we show you behind the scenes things, we let you know what's coming up here on YouTube, so if you are on Instagram, um, do join us over there too. So carrying on the process, just putting in these little central veins on each of the petals and just carrying on. You can see that you can really get a strong depth of colour with the Inktense pencils and I'm almost using it in its strongest form straight from the swatches that I swatched out onto the watercolour card. It's all, You can use them straight onto the watercolour paper but of course it would be very difficult to get a strong thin line which is why I'm using my paintbrush to apply them this way. You can get some really fine veins by just applying the paint onto your swatch card picking up the pigment from the swatch card and painting it on this way. A very easy way to get some fine lines without having that sort of um, muddy look that you can sometimes get with watercolour. Everything's dry so I'm just glazing over the colour now with some madder brown and mixing these two colours as you can see here. That was just um, the Ionian colour that I just uh, flashed very quickly on the screen there. I felt that the underside of the stem of the clover needed a little bit more of a boost so I'm just applying Ionian with bark here and blending it through like this and adding a fern this time straight onto the paper. Um, you must make sure that your paper is dry when you do this because otherwise it will stick and form a really um, strong kind of colour which is fine if that's what you want, but if you do apply it onto wet paper, you can get it to stick to the paper and not move around as much. If you are applying your pencil straight onto the paper, make sure that it's dry. I'm still building up the colors underneath the flower head where the stem joins the flower, just by adding some of the darker values. This, and you can see the colors that I've picked up there. It doesn't have to be super accurate. I just felt that it needed a little bit of a boost. I'm just taking the Ionian green tone with bark down the side of the stem like this and I'm going to blend it through in a second. I just felt it was looking a little bit too flat. So this is Fern, again just um, this time I'm taking it from the colour swatch card like this, the watercolour swatches that I've done and my one of my favourite colours actually from the Inktense pencil range is Bark, it's a very versatile colour and I use it quite a lot. That was dark chocolate I swatched out there and now that we have those tiny little veins in place we can enhance them a little bit more by just using the dark chocolate colour on its own and outlining some of the elements of the papery section of the clover. Now this time I'm using bark um, just in the straight onto the paper. Now as I said earlier on make sure that your paper is dry otherwise it will stick. 
So make sure that it's dry before you blend it, otherwise it will stick and you won't be able to get that blend done. If you want a really strong colour on your paintings, this is all very well, um, but if you want to blend it through afterwards as I'm doing here, your paper must be dry before you do this. And just continuing the process on all the little elements of the clover, building up the colours as I work through. Once again, this time I'm adding mauve, going over some of the petals like this, applying the pencil this time directly onto the paper. And activating it with my water in a little while like this. This just gives a little bit more colour to the areas that I felt need a bit of a boost. At this stage it's just a case of repeating the process and you can see how I'm picking up these colours from my swatch card here, this time in a very very strong form. I'm going to stop talking and let you watch the rest of this video, listen to some music and remember to stay right until the end where I'll put the line drawing and reference photograph. So pause that screen, screenshot them and then you can print them out that way. Thank you for joining us here on YouTube and remember to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our future videos. Thank you for watching and until next time.